Good morning, Kid Point. Pastor Daniel here. We are so glad you decided to join us for our online worship experience as we continue in our I Know It Sounds Crazy But It's True summer series. And can you believe it? We only have two more weeks left. And we've learned some really crazy but true Bible stories. And we've had a lot of fun this summer. And I know today will be no different. But as we get started, I want to ask, have you ever been told to do something by a parent or a teacher or somebody else in authority over you? Maybe a grandparent or something? Of course, we've all been told to do things by people that are in charge of us, right? But have you ever been told to do something and you did not want to do it? <laughs> of course you have. I know I have. You know, whenever I was little, my parents would tell me to clean my room. I didn't want to clean my room. Now, let me ask you, what would happen if you didn't do what they told you? Chances are you're going to get in trouble. I know I did, right? So whenever we somebody in authority tells us to do something, they expect us to do it. And if we don't, well, we can get in trouble. But if we do, if we do what they say and we obey and, tr and, and follow along what they, the directions and the, and the charges they've given us, then we get blessed. The Bible tells us we get blessed. And that happened today to a guy came, called Naaman. And we're going to get into that uh, a lot today and find out how he was blessed whenever he trusted and obeyed what God told him to do. But before we get into any of that, let's get into this. Uh, uh, let's watch this video intro to kind of explain it further about what we're going to be learning about today. Hello, everybody. Once again, it's me, Josh, taking you on a wild and wacky journey through some of the strangest stories of the Bible. In I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Now, I hope you guys have learned something in this series. I've learned you all get on my nerves. I learned how to tie my shoes. You don't wear shoes. Oh. That would explain the smell. <laughs> Smells like grandma. <laughs> Guys, no. I hope you've learned that sometimes God just doesn't make sense. To us, at least. I mean, he's all-powerful, all-knowing, and the creator of the universe. And sometimes his methods of fixing things can seem, well, kind of weird. <laughs> just like in today's lesson. Today, we're learning about a proud warrior. Yes, battle! Whose name was Naaman. <laughs> That's what my horse says. Your horse says what? Nay, man. Can I have the talking horse? No, man. Oh, I'm going to get that horse. Well, Naaman had a disease called leprosy. He can turn into a leopard. Not exactly. Leprosy was really serious. It's a disease that attacks your nerves and your skin. And it makes parts of your body rot, die, and fall off. I'm going to be sick. Well, Naaman heard about a guy named Elisha. You may have heard about him too. He was a powerful man of God. That's right. And if there was anybody that could fix Naaman, it was him. But things didn't exactly go the way Naaman thought they should. And sometimes, life is like that. You expect one thing, God does something else. So what do you think happens next? Does Naaman stay sick? Does Elisha help him? What are they gonna do? Find out in today's lesson. Will I get the talking horse? I said no, man. You stay away from Daisy. It's a story of how we need to trust and obey God even when it doesn't make sense. This show doesn't make sense. Professor, you know what time it is. Here, boys and girls. What are you doing? Reach out with your hands and press the button on the count of three. Don't listen to him. Ready? No. One. Put your hands down. Two. Stop it. Three. Please. <laughs> The story of Naaman is one that demonstrates the importance of being obedient. We have to realize that God has called us to trust and obey Him, no matter how difficult that may seem. So today we're going to learn about how the crazy instructions God gave Naaman to heal him from a horrible disease. Now, I don't want to get spoil it anymore for you, so we'll, we'll get into that when we get to our Bible lesson, and we're going to learn this crazy Bible story. But what the what you got to know for today simply says this, says, I will trust in the Lord no matter what. I will trust in the Lord no matter what. And another one of our great power verses, again, I know I say it probably this every week, but it's one of my favorite Bible verses. It's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. And it says this, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. 
Proverbs 3, 5. It's a great story. So let's just go in, get into it right now in our Bible story today about, the, uh, about Naaman getting healed. But before we do that, I'm going to need to change locations and I'm going to need to change my clothes. And you'll understand why real soon. So now that I've changed my clothes and my location, I can tell you the Bible story today that comes to us from the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. And it's about a guy named Naaman. Now Naaman was a general in an army of the country of Aram. And he wasn't a follower of God. Uh, but he had a horrible disease called leprosy. Now, a lot of you may remember, we've talked about leprosy before, but it's a disease of the skin that causes a lot of pain, and it causes the skin to rot off. It's kind of gross and nasty, but it's very painful. And a lot of people ended up dying of leprosy back in biblical times, and there was no cure. So Naaman was, was forced to have to suffer with this disease. But he had a servant girl in his home uh, that was an Israelite. Now, we don't know her name. The Bible never says her name. But she had the courage to stand up and, and tell her master that if she could, he could get to the prophet Elisha, then Elisha would be able to heal him. And so Naaman got all excited about this. And so he made this plan for this trip. And he gathered all these jewels and all these valuables, thinking that he could go to Elisha and pay him, and Elisha would heal him. So he made the trip and he showed up and he knocks on Elisha's door and he says, you know, and, and the servant of Elisha's um, house comes up and opens the door and says, my name is, uh, is Naaman. I want to see your master. I need to see Elisha because I'm, I have leprosy and I want him to heal me. So the servant goes in and tells Elisha and here's the here's a kind of a cool thing. Elisha doesn't even get up. He didn't even get up from the table. He gets up and he says, go tell him to go to the river and dump himself seven times in the Jordan and then he'll be healed. So the, the servant comes back uh, to, the, to the door and tells, the, and tells Naaman, or tells Naaman's like, my master said, go dunk yourself seven times in the river and you'll be healed. And that was it. And Naaman got ticked. He was like, what in the world? I have come all this way. I've got all this stuff to give this prophet. And he is telling me he doesn't even have the decency to come to the door and talk to me. That is crazy. I, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to that river and dunking myself seven times. That's crazy. But his servants that were with him, his men that were with him, convinced him to do it. So he says, what have I got to lose? I've got this disease. What else am I going to do? So Naaman goes down to the Jordan River, and he dunks himself in the river. Now, he dunked himself in the river, right? And nothing happened, right? He still had leprosy. But what did Elisha say? Elisha said to dunk himself seven times in the river. So, that was one. That was two. That was three. Four. We're up to five. Six. And whenever he came up after dunking the seventh time, he looked and he was healed. Naaman was healed because God did some crazy, wild, unbelievable thing to get him healed. Now, uh, Elisha could have come up and, and just talked to him and told him, you know, ask him to... to and to get him healed and just, you know, lay hands on him or, or maybe even just dunk one time. But he asked him to dunk seven times. Now, what if Naaman would have just given up after the first time and whenever he came up and he wasn't healed? Or what if he would have never gone to the river at all? He wouldn't have got his healing, right? But he trusted and obeyed. And that's what we have to do. When God ask us to do some what we think is some crazy stuff we have to trust and obey that god has got our best interests at heart and things are going to work out and that's what we're going to be talking about today in our lesson so as i we move into our our lesson now i'm going to go and get changed and get ready for the lesson so give me just one second 
Boy, I wish I had a towel. Thank you. Well, now I'm a little drier than I was before. But in our Bible story today, Elisha gave Naaman some instructions that really seemed out there, didn't it? He didn't want to do In fact, Naaman didn't want to do it. He was a little offended that he had come all that way and, and was told to go take a bath in the river instead of getting healed. He, he just didn't make sense to him. So let me ask you, has, has, has somebody given you instructions or, or orders that didn't really make sense? Maybe a teacher or a parent that told you to do something that you had no had no clue as to why you were having to do it that way, you know? But let me ask you this. Have you, has God ever asked you to do something that didn't make sense? For instance, let me give you an example. Maybe you have gotten a lot of money for your birthday, right? I know we get birthday presents a lot. Sometimes they're in cold, hard cash. When we get this money for our birthday and we've looked forward to our birthday for all year long and we get all this money, but somehow you feel that God wants you to give that money as an offering to missions. So the missionary can go and spread, use it to spread the gospel to people who wouldn't otherwise hear about Jesus. And you're saying, wait a minute, I've, I've worked and I've, this is a gift. I didn't want to have to, to give that get away. Why would God make me ask me to do something like that? Or better yet, what about the new kid at school? Maybe God is, you're, you're sitting there and this new kid who's nobody's wants to, to sit with at lunch, but God, you feel like God is telling you, you need to go and sit with that person and be their friend. And it just doesn't make sense. Why would God make you put you in that position? People don't want you. You may, people might think you're a dork for going up and doing something like that. Well, that's, you know, sometimes God asks us to do things that really just don't make sense. And what we have to understand, the truth of the matter is, is sometimes God's instructions are hard to understand. Sometimes God's instructions are hard to understand. Did it make sense to Naaman to have to go dip seven times in the river to get healed? Nope. How about this? Did it make sense for David to go face a nine-foot giant with just a slingshot? Nope. How about this? How about Gideon? Remember him? Did it make sense for Gideon to have to take on a whole mighty army with only 300 people armed with only a torch and a trumpet? (laughs) Absolutely not. You know, sometimes God's instructions are a bit hard to understand and they don't make sense at all. It's kind of like, have you ever seen blueprints for a building that's being built? If you've ever seen blueprints for a building being built, there's a whole lot of drawings and numbers and angles and different stuff that just you can look at and it makes absolutely no sense. How can they build this great building with just these blueprints with lines and numbers on it, right? But a builder and a, and somebody who is skilled at knowing at building buildings can look at those plans and it makes complete sense to them. It makes complete sense. They know exactly what is supposed to go where just by simply looking at these lines and numbers. See, we have to remember that God knows much more than we do. He is much more powerful than we are. And sometimes God has reasons for telling us to do something uh, that is a little out there, that just doesn't make sense to us. But what, have to, what we have to do is, is, is know that it makes sense to Him, and that's the most important thing. And the other thing we have to understand is that God is in control. God is, is in control of this whole universe. He, he knows what's going to happen today, tomorrow, or even a thousand years from now. You know, we have to, we have to, he spoke the world into existence, right? He, he controls the winds and the waves. He controls everything. He raised people from the dead and he even uh, parted the sea. Remember all the things that God has done? You know, he's in control of everything. So we have to, un- we have to just keep that in mind. You see, God doesn't ask us to figure out the why He is behind His his instructions. All He wants us to do is to trust and obey. We are supposed to trust and obey, not try to figure out the why. See, someone who knows everything, created everything, and is more powerful than everything is God, and He's the one we need to trust. And the greatest thing of all is that if we trust and obey, we are guaranteed that if we obey, we will be blessed. Blessing follows obedience.
obedience. So God wants to bless us when we obey, when we trust and obey. So we don't have to try to figure things out. We don't have to try to figure out why God wants us to do things. We just need to trust Him and we just need to obey. And when that happens, God blesses us. So as we pray today, we're going to pray that God helps, gives us the assurance to be able to trust Him and obey Him when He asks us to do things, even when those things seem a little crazy at times. So join me in prayer as we pray and finish up our service today. Father, we love you and we thank you so much for this day. And we thank you that we've had this time together online, dear God, to learn about how you blessed Naaman, God, when he trusted and obeyed even the craziest of instructions, God. And sometimes, God, you may ask us to do some crazy things, and it may make absolutely no sense to us. And God, when that happens, help us, dear Lord, not to try to worry with trying to figure it out and try to figure out why you're wanting us to do certain things a certain way, God, but to simply trust you and obey that everything is going to work out for our good. Just like a builder looks at the blueprints of a building and can and can see everything the way it needs to be, you look at our lives and can tell us every know everything that we need to do and how to get there. We just got to trust you, Lord. And when we do, God, we know that your word says we'll, you will bless us and take care of us. So help us, dear God, as we move start a new school year in a couple of weeks, dear God, that, that's going to look a lot different than it has in the past, God, but we're just going to trust you and obey that you have everything under control, and we're so thankful for that. So God, help us to understand that and, and to trust in you with everything and, all, and everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, guys, thank you so much for joining us for our online worship experience. Just a reminder, we are taking a summer break, an extended summer break from our Zoom small group, so we won't be meeting together uh, on our Zoom small group. We want to give you an, uh, some extra time to enjoy this weather, uh, this summertime with your family and your friends uh, before we start school in a couple of weeks. I know that's hard to think about, but we are going to be starting school in a couple of weeks. So enjoy that time, but we will see you again next week with our last sir, uh, message last uh, lesson in our I know it sounds crazy but it's true summer series I can't wait it's been fun and we're going to end with a bang so we hope to see you next week online again take care we love you and God bless <laughs>